I am turned on. This is what it looks like when a guy is turned on. <laughs> That's my wife making the loudest noise back there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my name is Liam Kennedy, and uh, this is what I'm going to be talking about. How can a tech gadget have people get the experience of feeling closer to the only six human beings in space, and by that, everyone else in the world? So, I'm going to take you through a little story. Where are these six people? They're on the International Space Station. Um, you probably all got my name there, Liam Kennedy. I invented this little device called the ISS Above. This is a wearable version of it. So, and it's been flashing away in the background over there and doing lots of other stuff. But this is where those six people are. And these are currently the six people who are up there. On the top, you've got uh, the it's Expedition 43 crew, which means it's the 43rd crew of six that um, have been on the International Space Station, which is, has been permanently manned uh, by astronauts uh, for nearly 15 years. It will be 15 years come November. And uh, we've got Terry Burtz. Uh, I, I'll, I won't go through all of their names. Um, there's one... Um, woman astronaut from the European Space Agency up there right now, Sam Cristofranti. And uh, then on the bottom line there, we have Scott Kelly, Mikhail Kornienko, and Gennady Podalko. They're the ones that have most recently got there. And the two that are um, on the lower left are going to be there for one whole year. It's the one-year mission. Um, so just a Show a cool photo there. That's me with Scott. <laughs> and as you can see, I'm, all, I'm always pretty hot. So uh, <laughs> I just realized that too. <laughs> there we go. And then me with the other three. This was taken in January before they launched, obviously, um, and, uh, which was a, a great... Um, this is, of all of the astronauts up there, I think Sam Christopher uh is just the coolest. She posted this recently when the Dragon spacecraft from SpaceX, just down the road here, um, uh, was launched and arrived at the space station. And uh, she posted this with a, uh, on Twitter with a tagline that said, um, there is coffee in that nebula. Slash, oh no, dragon, <laughs> because uh, an espresso machine um, uh, was delivered. So they can now have espresso up on the space station. So um, I'll get into why I think it's sort of really important, you know, to be connected to those human beings in space uh, in a little while. But I just wanted to tell you a little bit about how that happens. So, actually, back in November of 2013, I just came up, uh, I, it, I just got myself this computer called a Raspberry Pi. It's a non-edible computer. <laughs> but it was uh, invented, uh, where, would, where on this earth would a computer be invented that's called a Raspberry Pi? But England. <laughs> so, Monty Python, something like that, anyway. So, um, I realized that I could use this to do something that I was really passionate about, and that was to let people know when the space station's around. Because the space station comes around um, all our skies, almost wherever we are in the world, between five and eight times every single day. So you, you have these human beings above you five to eight times every day. So at the time that I created this slide, there were 800. Now there's nearly 900. And they're all around the world. This was the first one. I did a Kickstarter, crowdfunding. So I initially just built it so that uh, my grandkids could be inspired by space. My, uh, my oldest grandchildren are in, uh, are in London, in England. And uh, this was sitting on their Christmas tree uh, in December of 2013. Word got out about it, and then people wanted to get it, so I did a Kickstarter. 
this is the latest version, so that first version just lit up. That's all it did. Um, this new version, it uh, basically connects to the cameras on the space station as well and gives a whole load of other information. So This is just a little slideshow of all of the different screens that are shown. So you get this Raspberry Pi, and I forgot to bring one out here, but it's, you know, say, about this big. And uh, you just um, connect it into your TV, and it gives you all of this information about the space station. And it just shows you, uh, this is telling you when the next pass of the space station is coming over. And it goes through all of these screens. And this last one is uh, a good one to look at. This shows you the orbit of the space station. And uh, wherever it is in yellow, that means the space station is in sunlight. And that's a really critical aspect because the cameras that I use, that I connect to on the space station, are only uh, visible, only useful when the space station is in sunlight. So the cameras are, uh, they're run through this device. It's called the High Definition Earth Viewing Experiment. It's really just a box with four cameras in it, one pointing forward, one down, and two behind. This is what it looks like. This is real time. I captured this this morning. That is Hawaii. This is what five miles per second looks like at 250 miles up. And this is just the front camera view. It'll just very quickly switch to the down camera view. That line in the middle there is actually the solar panel for the, the SpaceX Dragon. So it, it happens to be there because it's docked currently. This is where it really gets interesting to me because you start to see, oh, this isn't just some satellite. It's actually the space station. That's um, a part of the Soyuz spacecraft. There's two rear cameras. This is the better one. You can see Hawaii just uh, scooting over the horizon over there. There's something really wrong about this one. The space station, which is football field sized, they occasionally turn it up uh, 90 degrees up. So this is the rear camera, and they're pointing down. This was earlier this morning when they actually released that uh, this item on the top left, that spacecraft is the Russian Soyuz spacecraft that uh, um, it, it's actually the progress resupply vehicle and they just dropped it so that it would burn up in the atmosphere. It's where they get rid of all of their dried poop and stuff like that. <laughs> so why is this great? I, I say what this provides is something that was missing from NASA for many years. This actually provides a method, the cameras that are on there, provides a way for the public to feel included in the space program and really get connected to the International Space Station, which is going over 90% of the populated areas of the world every day. And since it came on board almost a year ago, uh, the Ustream channel, has had 83,000 followers and 47 million views, which is pretty respectable. And I wanted to get into, well, what difference does that really make? And this is what I'm sharing with you, and the title of my talk was really speaking to what I've encountered in interactions with 900 customers around the world. Bill Nye happened to sort of create a really quotable quote in an article, he was just interviewed for the Wall Street Journal in November. Just 17 questions you'd want to ask Bill Nye. And one of the questions was this. What is your most recent obsession? Uh, you've probably already read what's up there, but <laughs> I do it all day. I leave it on more than is reasonable. It's just a beautiful thing. <laughs> So, and I'll show you the next one. So that was, that was from Bill Nye, who, who bought one from me. He just wanted to buy it. And uh, 
he's now got several, because after that quote in the Wall Street Journal, uh, the next month I had 450 new orders. <laughs> Who believed it? <laughs> um, but this, this really embodies, again, what this is about. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it. Uh, so this is from a customer. Um, it's created a buzz of excitement in my family, friends, and visitors. Most express disbelief at first that images they are witnessing are real, live feeds. Several people have silently sat on my sofa with their hands over their mouths, simply staring as though they are seeing an unprecedented achievement of mankind. I'm moved by that. <laughs> That's... <laughs> You know, it's something that actually you do get overcome with. And this one, a very simple statement. Thanks so much for doing this. My neighbors even appreciate our big blue marble more. It sparked several environmental conversations, including one that led to cleaning up the neighborhood. Sounds small, but I tell you, you get yourself virtually on the space station, and it's something, something I say, I assert, something happens to everyone who actually does get the existential shift that happens when you really give yourself over to this. This is another one, just a school. So they are starting to get into schools. I'm a middle school teacher and have an ISS above attached to an LCD monitor mounted on my wall. My students enjoy the perspective offered by the video and have even attempted to figure out what part of the Earth the camera is seeing. It's a great way to integrate science and geography. My 150 students, thank you for your efforts and look forward to future products from your team. Now, what I want to leave you with here is that these thank yous are from my customers but they were specifically targeting NASA. I asked them to picture themselves at NASA next Thursday, April the 30th, which is the one year anniversary of these cameras, and to say thank you from their heart. And these are their messages. So although, yes, it references the ISS above, who they're thanking is NASA. And it's not something that NASA actually experiences a lot of. <laughs> so that's part of why I'm doing this. What is the answer to that question? How does it happen? I say it's something very simple. That's all it takes. My device is something that makes a hell of a fuss. When the space station is in your sky, you know that this thing is going by. You know that there are the only human beings in space are above you. So, and before you can do anything, don't you have to be present to it? How much of our lives do we just walk on through mostly oblivious? That's me. <laughs> on autopilot. I want to leave you with another couple of things. So these, this is another aspect of what's going on. The astronauts have live tweets. This is something that was from this morning. Uh, Sam Cristoforetti saw a shadow resulting from the, um, from the volcano. And then my friend Scott Kelly says this reminds him of his cereal. <laughs> It's humans. I mean, to me, this is it. The next thing that's happening is, in fact, is it 9 p.m. yet? Because that's the first time that the space station has gone over Nepal. I just sometimes just really get these astronauts, they're above everything. You know, we can sort of put Syria out of our minds sometimes. We can put other things out of our minds. They're over the top of it. 
And I say that's an important perspective to have. And that's why this next thing. I'm going to sort of pitch this to you. Um, Ron Guerin is an, an ex-NASA astronaut. He's just come out with this book called The Orbital Perspective. And this is about making a difference by elevating our um, view to orbit. And what that is about is having a view of the planet, but also having an empathy that we raise to the level of orbit so that we can take on the big issues in the world. Sorry, <laughs> I'm still really, really moved. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. That's, uh, that's my presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sure, yeah, and I think I've gone over time, so there's no time for questions, but uh, the ISS above is sitting over there, and you will, the next pass, there was a pass just as I was about to start the presentation, but uh, um, it's over there, you can see what it's like, it will be giving live views from this space station when it's available, so I'll be, I'll be at the back. Thank you so much. Thank you to Bill. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>